And thanks for staying with us, everyone, and welcome back to the program. Criticisms uh, trailed the February 10th, 2018 local government elections in Kano State, as social media was awash with pictures of alleged underage voters. Although the Independent National Electoral Commission was not responsible for the conduct of that election, the Commission on February 21st this year set up an investigative committee to verify the claims. Two months after, the committee's report presented by the chairman of INEC dismisses the allegations. Well, you have your fears. You've told us about some of your fears, and those are the things that we're breaking down for your understanding on the program today. So my panel tonight on the program, uh, Dr. Oluwale Ostazi Uzi is a director of voter education at INEC and also the national coordinator of election monitor and election process analyst, Mr. Abiodun Ajijola. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time on the program. So let me quickly come to you, Mr. Ajijola. From what you know about INEX process, INEX voter register, considering the history of uh, trying to fine-tune INEC register from uh, 2010, 2011, up until 2015, do you think that the INEC register that we have as of today is one that should give Nigerians a peace of mind ahead of 2019? Uh, thank you for having me. Good evening. Well, um, I'll start by saying in a direct response to your, your question that I don't think that um, I personally um, do not believe that the register has uh, very significant uh, problems. Uh, and why I say this is because, as you know, INEC has its internal processes that it uses in order to cleanse the register where there are issues such as double registrations and um, you know registrations that have issues and here and all that but apart from that i would also go to say that you know that a good register is a foundation for any election and as you know 2015 general elections especially the presidential elections were regarded as uh, one of the freest and fairest and generally an election that produced an outcome that was acceptable to the majority of nigerians has been credible and even the international community from this same register. Since 2015, we've had over 100 elections conducted, but the major ones, the governorship elections that have been held in Bayelsa, in Kogi, in Edo, in Ondo, in Anambra recently, to most stakeholders have been elections that have been um, generally credible and acceptable by most stakeholders as being a, a representative of the will of the people. And where we say that the register forms the bedrock of a credible election and the elections that have been held using this register have been elections which many have regarded as credible elections and representative of the people, then I personally think that the register has, is not um, a, a significant problem at the moment. But that does not mean that it is perfect and that does not mean it cannot be improved. And, and I would like to also say that in looking at this issue we must critically assess the issue of the local government elections. We all know that in Nigeria we have a significant problem with the conduct of local government elections. When you look at the elections conducted in all the local government elections across the country, they only produce one result, and it always matches the ruling party in the state, irrespective of whether it is APC or PDP or whatever. And therefore, I think that in this investigation or looking at this issue, more fingers need to be pointed at the local government uh, uh, organization, the CX, the State Independent Electoral Committee, who have a history of conducting elections that are not representative of the will of the people and generally are not seen as being credible. In 2013, we had an election conducted in a Boeing state, also by the Boeing state um, uh, independent electoral commission and it is quite amazing that in that election we had more people that voted than the total registered of voters in that very uh, state and uh, that result was released and published as a credible result so we have had a lot of issue with local government elections so i think more needs to be done with observing and, and investigating the the conduct of local government elections but that does not rule out the fact that we need to investigate and check the, the register. Also, I will add that political parties should not say that um, if there is an issue with the register that they have nothing they can do, because every political party is provided 30 days before the general elections or any election, the register of voters. So before the 2015 general elections, by law, 30 days before the election, INEC must provide a soft copy of the national register of voters to the political parties. What I would have expected is that if a political party or political parties are unhappy with the register or feel that there are issues with the register, 
Minister, apart from raising that INEC. And of course, in the press statement today, INEC said they have not received any formal complaint about what happened in Kano or what supposedly happened in Kano. What I would have expected is that the political parties should go and do the investigations as well and say, look, we have a register you gave to us in 2015. We, are, we recognize that no election has been conducted by INEC in 2015, since 2015, in Kano. So we looked at the register in Kano, we have looked at the several millions of voters, and we have come up with 300,000 or 500, whatever number that we feel should not be on this register by virtue of the pictures that we are seeing. These people are too young. We want you to take a look at this. And then this kind of approach, I think, will put INEC on its feet, but also will be able to conclusively show whether or not there is something that is being done which is not uh, acceptable. But I think just going to the media and condemning the electoral management body, I, I think, is not the best approach. Let, let me ask uh, uh, Mr. Ozazuzi again. Uh, a lot have changed since 2015, the last general elections in Nigeria. Uh, a lot of people, uh, perhaps, who have been on that register may have died. So some of them may not be in the country any longer. The question is, is INEC tidying up the register? Is there any process to tidy up the register before the 2019 election? Yes, indeed. The register itself is organic. It cannot remain the same. It cannot remain static, as you said. People have migrated. People are dead. Um, and in fact, new people have also been added. So it's an organic uh, living. Uh, uh, register and as such that we realize this and measures are always taken in place now we have told people numerously that look when people die it is uh, incumbent on, on us on, on to formally inform the commission if that is the case then their names will be removed from the register but of course most people don't bother about it. I am not aware of this. I can't think of any single case where I personally have knowledge of where um, the, the commission was informed of such we don't forget also that we recently went to the National Population Com Commission. That is a body statutory um, that should register births, to register deaths. And we said, look, give us the names and particulars of people who have been reported dead so that we can use this, check if they are in a register, and do the need. All right, because, so, Mr. So Zazeruzi, for a lot of people, just, just quickly, with, if, I, um, if, I, if I'm a bot in here, for a lot of Nigerians who are tech survey. Uh, we we'll know that we, Nigeria do not, uh, does not have uh, a comprehensive and a singular portal that has a data of all Nigerians uh, are saying that, look, the possibility of multiplicity of uh, people's data on INEC register. Invariably, someone can uh, register here in Lagos and register in some other places. A lot of people are saying there is a possibility of that. There's a possibility of everything. That's why we call it a possibility. But the issue is what are the probabilities of that? And certainly that when we do run APHIS on a national level, that will be discovered. It's as easy as that. And um, the database is a national treasure which we should really, really uh, see what we can do to protect. And that's why we said we want other people to help us as well. The political parties had an update of the register more than two months ago. And not one single, not one political party right. has called us to say, look, there's something wrong with this register. Certain people are dead or certain illegitimate people are not on that register. That's the challenge we've thrown to them. That is the reason why the commission, in accordance with the statutory provision, gives them the register of those who were registered in the previous year within 60 days of the new year. We've done that for this year and no complaint has come from any political party. And the chairman said so today, we'll expand that. Take selected media, media, selected CSOs, credible CSOs, say, look, this is the register. It's open to you. That, in addition, and without prejudice to anybody applying for the national register, for the state register, or register of a particular locality, to check whether they are ineligible for that All right. register. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Oluwale Osazuzi, for your time on the program. I'm afraid we're out of time. Mr. Abiodu Ajijala, many thanks for your time on the program. Always a pleasure having your take on very naughty issues such as this one. Well, that's our show for today. Many thanks for being part of it. We come back to you on Sunday at 8 p.m. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye-bye.